English Grammar Lesson Six. Topic: Verb Tenses. Our focus will be on the present perfect and the present perfect progressive. This is part two, and I'll continue to help you understand the present perfect by explaining reasons why we use this tense. Now let's talk about a second reason why we use the present perfect, and I'll use an example about my family. October, November, December, these are months when the weather turns cold and rainy and possibly snowy, at least here in New England. In short, this is a time when people get sick. They get cold, they get the flu. My family has visited the doctor several times already. Why did I say has visited? Because it's still December. This period of time is not over yet. It's incomplete. It's unfinished. So to talk about an unfinished period of time, we can use the present perfect. There may be more visits to the doctor within this period of time. Once again, a second reason for using the present perfect is to express an unfinished period of time. The action likely happened repeatedly in the past, and the present perfect suggests that the action may happen again in the future. Before we consider the two examples below, let's look at the timeline. The period in question begins in the past, continues to the present, and possibly extends to the future. It's an open or unfinished period of time. First example: My family has visited the doctor several times already. There were visits in the past, and there may be more in the future. Second example: The topic has been requested many times. There were requests for this topic in the past, and there may be more requests in the future. And if there are, I'll tell these new viewers to watch this lesson. Sometimes it's easier to understand one verb tense when you contrast it with another. I said that my family has visited the doctor several times already. The year is not over yet. There are a few more weeks before the end of the year. So there may be more visits to the doctor. It's an unfinished period of time. But what about last year, 2007? 2007 is over and done with. It's a finished, it's a complete period of time. So I can say that last year, we only went to the doctor two times. Went. We went to the doctor two times in 2007. 2008? We've visited the doctor several times already. Have visited, because 2008 is not over yet. So when we contrast these two tenses, we see that the present perfect expresses an unfinished or open period of time. The simple past expresses a finished or closed period of time. Now try again to understand the difference through these two examples. Using the present perfect, my family has visited the doctor several times already this year. This year is 2008. It's not over. And with the simple past, my family visited the doctor only two times in 2007. 2007 is a closed period of time. Now let me tell you about a third reason why we might use the present perfect. And I'll use my work as an example. Some of you may know that I don't just post videos here on YouTube. I write material for English language learners and for teachers of English as a second or foreign language. I've written several textbooks, a few in Russia and some here in the United States. Now why did I say I've written some textbooks? Well, because it's not really important for me to tell you the dates of publication. I said I've written because I'm talking about the general past, an unspecified past. I don't need to be specific about the times that I wrote these books. I'm just telling you that these are things that I did in the past. I've written textbooks. I could also add, though, that that statement implies that there's a hope I will write more. It's similar to the sentence, my family has visited the doctor several times already. 
Just as there may be more visits to the doctor, there may be more textbooks in the future, I hope. Again, a third reason why we might use the present perfect is to talk about general experience in the past, or past actions at unnamed or unspecified times. Consider these two examples. In both cases, I'm speaking in general about my professional experience. The first, I've written some textbooks. The second, I've taught private and group classes. Now, do you need to know when exactly I wrote the books or when exactly I taught these classes? No, you don't. So, in the present perfect, times and dates are unspecified, usually because they're not important, but they could also be unknown. Now in light of our third reason, let's make another contrast between the present perfect and the simple past. The present perfect can express a general past. I've written some textbooks. When exactly? The date isn't specified. With the simple past, we name specifics. My first book came out in 2000. So as soon as we have a specific date and we can show a point on a timeline, we need to use the simple past, not the present perfect. Exercise. Choose the best verb tense to complete the statement, the present perfect or the simple past. Number one. Read the statement to yourself and then I'll tell you the answer. Answer. I have been, or I've been to Siberia two times. I'd love to return one day with my husband and children. I said I've been because there's a suggestion of a future visit. I don't think the simple past is incorrect, but I think that the present perfect is the better choice here. Number two. Answer. I won't be able to return to my hometown of Pittsburgh before the end of the year, but I saw my parents back in May and again in October. The only choice here is the simple past, I saw. First of all, we have a specific mention of time, in May, in October. Second, although the year is not complete at the time I'm speaking, there is no suggestion of additional visits. Number three. Answer. My husband and I have traveled abroad. We were in Belgium in 2001 and we loved it. We talk about going back there one day. The first sentence uses the present perfect. It's the better choice because we're speaking about a shared general past experience. Also, at the end of the statement, there's a suggestion of future travel. In the second sentence, we have a specific date mentioned, in 2001. 2001 is a finished period of time, so we must use the simple past. I hope you've understood everything so far. Please go on to the next part of this lesson. This is the end of part two. Be sure to catch part three. There's more to talk about, such as adverbs of time, questions, and forming the negative. I'll see you there.